All right, in this video, we're going to talk about continuity laws. Now, this is going to be a little bit more technical than the previous video on continuity. And the examples are going to be a little bit harder, but this is the sort of thing you should expect in exams. So hopefully this will all make sense. There's a few practice questions at the end that will hopefully solidify what we're talking about. So here's a formal proof. And it's important to know this because in a multiple choice or true or false section of a test, this is a very probable question. And here's our theorem. If f of x and g of x are continuous at a point A, then the following are continuous. So then the following are continuous. Now remember that f and g have to be continuous for the following to be continuous. Otherwise, it's not true. So f of x plus g of x are continuous. In fact, that's plus or minus. We can take a constant and multiply it by our function, and that's also continuous. We can take our function and multiply it by the other one, and that will also be continuous. And finally, we can divide the functions, assuming that uh, g of a is not equal to zero at our point a. So the following are continuous. In fact, I'm going to give you a quick proof of one that hopefully you can figure out the rest on your own. They're really not that hard. They all follow the same format, so hopefully you can provide it. Okay, so I'm going to prove that this first one is true. Okay, so f and g are continuous. So we can say that the limit as x approaches a of the function f plus g at a point x is equal to the limit as x approaches a. And we're going to distribute f and g into their own functions. We can say f of x plus g of x, which is going to equal the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus the limit as x approaches a of g of x. And we know this because of the limit laws we learned in a few videos back. And by plugging the limits in, we know that it's f of a and g of a. If you remember continuity, this is the definition of continuity. And we know they are continuous, so this definition is satisfied. And then we can split that up into f plus g of a, which again satisfies the definition of continuity. So we have just proven that that is continuous. And that was number one. I challenge you to prove the rest of these. These are all in a very similar manner. In fact, proving the minus sign really is incredibly simple. We just put a minus sign in front of all of these and we pretend it's the same case and everything's okay. All right, so that was a that was the first proof we need to look at. So if we take a function, like let's say as an example, if we take f of x, is equal to x and g of x is equal to x squared, then x plus x squared is continuous at a if we have some point. And this can really be proven for any a you choose. All right, so let's take a look at another theorem, which is going to tie in with what we just saw in this example here. And that is all polynomials are continuous. And you should be able to tell by drawing a graph of a polynomial that your pen will never lift off the page. So if we take a parabola, that's x squared, that's going like that. If we take a cubic function, it will, whoa, that is an eraser. We don't want that. It'll look something like that. And as you can tell, there's no point where a polynomial isn't defined. It goes to infinity, it goes to negative infinity. And that is good enough. And now another quick theorem is that the following functions are continuous in their domains. Now, in their domains are something we're going to talk about in just a second. But their domains are the numbers where it is defined. So a domain it consists of every place where it is defined. And as opposed to where it's not defined. So if you take the function 1 over x squared, 
it is not defined at x equals 0, which means that x equals 0 is not in its domain. Instead, the domain is negative infinity to 0 and 0 to negative infinity, where the 0 is not included. That's what's meant by these circular brackets. If I say 0 to 1, that means that 0 and 1 are not included. But if I put square brackets around them, then the numbers are included. You'll have to remember this for the examples in a few seconds. Okay, so the following functions are continuous. Log functions, exponents, so e to the x, or say x to the 47, which is a polynomial, but exponents will suffice. Roots functions, rational functions, so say if you have a form p of x over q of x, or f of x over g of x, as shown in the example above, and also trig functions, especially inverse trig functions as well, so we'll put a little bracket up there. Alright, so with these examples of functions that are continuous in the domain, we're going to look at a question that will explore a lot of these. Okay, so we want to find where f of x of the following function is continuous. ln of x plus the inverse tan of x over x squared minus 1. Now, this can be really tricky because you're saying, well, this is a log function up here, and this is an arctan function, and I don't really know what's going on here. It's really confusing. So we're going to draw some graphs of these, and we're going to start with ln of x. Now ln of x looks kind of like this function here. It isn't defined at 0. In fact, it never hits 0, and it does go up to infinity as we go throughout all of x, but it goes so very, very slowly. So it's one of the slowest growing functions out there. So ln x is continuous when x is greater than 0. So this is what we mean by its domain. Its domain is x greater than 0. And now we can take the graph of the arctan of x, which you might not memorize or know yet, but it is very good to memorize this function. So it has horizontal asymptotes, which means it never quite reaches the, these points at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So really the it's it's the whole domain. So if we take the the arctan of x, then we say that x is just in the real universe, which means all numbers, which I'll signify as negative infinity to infinity. So because we know that ln of x is x greater than 0 and tan of x is the whole thing, then we can say that the numerator has a domain, or is continuous, for x greater than 0. So we can also write this as 0 infinity. Now let's look at the bottom here. We're saying, well, where is this not defined? x squared minus 1. So we need to figure out where x squared minus 1 is equal to 0, and this is equal to x squared is equal to 1, so that's plus or minus 1. Well, we know that x equals negative 1 isn't even in the domain to begin with, so we can forget about that one. But what's important is that when x is equal to 1, this function is not defined. So we know that it is not continuous at x equals 1. Therefore, we have a domain of the function where it is continuous from 0 to 1 and 1 to infinity. And why? Because we can't include 1, because it's not defined at 1, it's not continuous at 1, and it is continuous everywhere else thanks to our numerator. So that can be pretty difficult. Uh, you can check on wolframalpha.com, graph the function, which also helps a lot, and we can jump right into a practice problem, and hopefully you can figure this out. So for our practice problem, let's take f of x is equal to 5 plus root x over the square root of 5 plus x, and we want to know 
where it is continuous and using the fact that it's continuous find that the limit of x before of this function that's what we want to find so first of all is it continuous is it continuous and on what domain is it continuous and then find the limit so pause the video try this problem and i'll come back in a second all right so hopefully you should have had enough time to try this problem if you struggled that is okay but we're gonna test this out right now okay so first we take a look at the numerator and we say 5 plus root x where is this continuous well this is a polynomial so what does this mean this is a form 5 plus x to the half so we say it's continuous on all real numbers not quite because if it's under a square root x cannot be negative so x has to be zero or greater so we can say that the numerator is continuous on zero to infinity in fact that's horrible i should not put square brackets i should put a circular bracket at the end of that and now on the bottom we take 5 plus root x well the root of 5 plus x and what do we know about this is that when x is equal to negative 5 this is going to be the root of 0 because the bottom is undefined when x equals 0 so x has to be greater than negative 5 if it includes negative 5 then this goes to 0 and the whole function is undefined so we say that the domain of the bottom is negative 5 to infinity not including 5 okay so we know that x is continuous as long as it is above 0 so because it's continuous we know that the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x is going to be equal to f of 4 thanks to our definition of continuity so let's plug in f of 4 so this is 5 plus root 4 over the root of 5 plus 4 which is equal to 5 plus 2 over the root of 9 which is equal to 7 over 3 so this is our limit and we know this thanks to our definition of continuity our checking of our domain and continuity in this function and then taking the limit of a number that is within the realm of that continuity domain if we were to say well what's the limit as x goes to negative 5 of f of x then we could not say that that is equal to f of negative 5 because that is not in the domain that is continuous but if we say the limit as x approaches 100 or x approaches 0 or x approaches 27 those are all fair game but as soon as we get below 0 then we get into a little bit of trouble because well what is 5 plus the root of negative 1 well you don't know what that is but the root of 5 minus 1 is a lot easier to talk about and we're not in complex numbers so let's not think about these situations but you don't want to get into a situation where you can't evaluate it and that's what this whole continuity principle is about so hopefully that was sufficient practice uh, I will be doing a limit review video towards the end of this section so I'll give you guys a lot more practice limits to do and a lot harder limits so I will see you guys in those videos